Hi, I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Welcome to the Iron Bowl Hour. Or as we like to call it, the show that's heading to Waffle House after tonight's taping to get scattered, covered, and smothered in blood. They... On tonight's show. Yeah, everything is legal in Louisiana, right? That has no bearing on this argument whatsoever. Right. How long before this trend of long-haired football players is over? Uh, let's hope next Saturday. Seriously. Okay. From atop Red Mountain at Vulcan Park and Museum, it's the Iron Bowl Hour. Reed, it is time for us to agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Here we go. We are still two weeks away from the colossal matchup of Alabama and LSU, but it's not too soon to talk about the future implications of this game. If the showdown on November 5th comes down to a couple of points, would it be possible to see a national championship rematch of the two teams? Read easy peasy Japanese on this guy. Oh, uh, international. Yeah, hmm. no rematch. I don't like rematches whatsoever. I think we had this debate already with the Ohio State Michigan. Remember, nobody wanted Florida playing in that national championship, and we mm -hmm. see what happened there. Yeah, uh, Florida yeah, that. annihilated Ohio State. So, oh, but not for the first 30 seconds of the game. Not for that first mm -hmm. uh, opening kickoff, yeah. but, but after that, they totally blew him out of the water. I agree. I think that LSU and Alabama are by far the two best teams in the country. Mm -hmm. But, Reed, they get a chance to play and decide who's better. That's enough. Okay, that's an easy argument for you to make right, right. now. But I think that what's happening here is you're forgetting the whole purpose of the BCS. Okay. Do you even know the purpose of the BCS? No. Is, okay, I'll tell you what it is. Okay. <laughs> Everyone who knows anything about the BCS knows that the purpose of the BCS is to drive people crazy <laughs> right. and make them feel angry and frustrated. <laughs> and the best way to do that is to rematch two teams that already played. They've already been decided during the regular season. Let's make them play again. That'll get people pretty ticked off. So that would be the BCS working. I mean, the only way I could see this happening at all is if, mm -hmm. say, it's like really like a three-point game, that's it. Every other team in the country has a loss. I'm talking about Boise State included, mm -hmm. Clemson, all these teams have to lose. Mm -hmm. And then Alabama or LSU, whoever plays in the SEC championship, blows the other team, say Georgia, out of the water. That's the only, only time I would say it's okay, and I still don't. I think okay, they get well, their chance. But listen, you already made the argument earlier. Okay, and, and I did. In, yeah. in, Okay, in all seriousness, the, the point of the BCS technically is to pit the two best teams at the end of the season against one another. Well, uh, we one and two. Get, it says to pit one and two against but, each other. Right, but that's the whole idea is that right. we would get the two best teams and we would have essentially a two-team playoff. And that's <laughs> what – which is it's so stupid Ridiculous, I know it's hard yeah. to take it seriously but 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 if we are going to try that is the intent of the BCS and listen let's face facts LSU and Alabama regardless of what happens on November 5th those are the two best football teams in the country they should match up for the national title on the big stage in January I'm telling you though I maybe I'm alone in this but I mm -hmm. wouldn't mind seeing Boise State play one of these two teams I but, wouldn't mind seeing that. I'm <clears> telling you. Because you hate Boise State? I don't know. Why would you want to see that? No, because I think Boise State actually maybe could match up, Reed. Mm. Against Alabama? I mean, I'm just saying. Are you thinking that just because How do we Utah know if it's never going to happen? Fools of Alabama several years ago? Is that why you're talking about it? You never know. You never know in these situations. Listen, no, you do know. I mean, no. we know why Alabama lost that game several years ago, right? This is a totally different situation. It was the crowd's fault? It's, it, was the crowd's it was the crowd's fault, crowd's exactly. Fault, yeah. We all know about that. Yeah. Listen, if, they're, if this is for the national title, Boise State is not going to win that football game. Mm, we'll see. Mm. After a tough game with LSU last week, Auburn gets some relief as Ole Miss heads to Jordan-Hare. With all of the problems Auburn had during last week's game, what do you think their biggest weakness is? Will, this is a tough one. Uh, when you think about weaknesses on right. this Auburn football team, yeah. gosh, there's so many to choose from. We actually agree on that. Right? Yeah, this yeah. is a lot of weaknesses. And, and, you know, before we get to being critical about these okay. kids. Let's remember, these are 18 and 19 year old kids. So Correct. they are very easy to criticize. And once again, <laughs> that makes it very difficult to choose which one you want to call out by name and him or him. Here's what I'm gonna say, Will. If we're gonna choose one weakness, the strong, the biggest weakness, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say it's got to be the quarterback uh, for the Carolina Panthers. Well, um, the fact that, that he's not playing for this team anymore. Listen, let's face it. We all know that last year's Auburn team was a one-man team. Sure. That right. man is no longer on the team. As a result, they stink. Reed, let's be realistic. Uh, Auburn didn't just lose Cam Newton and Nick Fairley even last year. They lost well, let me – okay, you're right. I'll give it to you. Okay. They did not just lose Cam Newton and Nick Fairley. They also lost several key games this season. So you're right about that. <laughs> right. You know. They lost 19 starters. Oh, and 19. That. How many people even play on a football team I, at the same time? I think it's 19 if it's rugby. I have no right? idea, but yeah. it's got to be around Something that. Like I've that. never actually seen a football game. Mm -hmm. But they lost almost their whole team, Reed. And so that sets up 
clearly they're going to have weaknesses all over the place. I don't want to do. beat up on the kids too bad. No, and people already have done that most of the season. So right. you're right. We don't LSU need to do that. did plenty of that. Uh, but read every week there's been a different weakness. Mm-hmm. First it was the defense, then it was the quarterbacks, then it was the offense overall. Yeah. Clearly against LSU it was the offensive line. Uh, Clint Mosley got beat up like he was in Waffle House. It mm-hmm. was unbelievable. Yes. That was yeah. – Okay, yeah, you make a good point there. Right. But one thing that has been a consistent problem for Auburn this year, and therefore I'm going to say it is the biggest weakness, okay. is the quarterback position. Right, listen, Barrett Trotter came out, high expectations for him to sort of manage the offense. Everybody right. said, oh, Gus Malzahn, nobody can play poorly, and you know the offense is going to be effective. And that didn't happen. And I think a lot of it can be traced back to quarterback play. Look at never before has Gus Malzahn gone through a stretch of games like this where they're scoring under 20 points and right. having so few yards of productive offense. So I think the quarterback play there, listen, Clint Mosley, we don't, he's been on the ground most of the time that he's no, been the starting quarterback. Gosh. So there's not enough to know about him. Kyle Frazier, a talented kid, but clearly is limited in what he can do with the offense. We've right. seen him throw a couple passes, and they were not pretty. No, I think that right now having – you know the the lack of having that one person who can run that team offensively um, is what's hurting Auburn the most. Well, I would tend to agree with you there, Reed, but okay. I think the problem actually is the offensive line, and that's what's causing the quarterback issues. Those guys don't have any time. Clint Mosley was on the ground the whole LSU game. Okay, well, listen, you're wrong. If that was the biggest weakness, we would have seen that earlier in the season. Well, I think this is finally the first time Auburn played a legitimate no team. No quarterback that was gonna... is the biggest problem with this Auburn team this year. I think it's the line. Mm-hmm. LSU reinstated the three players this Tuesday who were suspended for failing a drug test for synthetic marijuana. Was this a fair punishment for the trio, and should they be allowed to play in the matchup versus Alabama? Reed, I think it's totally fair. Here's why. This is basically a legal substance. I think the state of Alabama just made it illegal like a week ago. So your argument is that this this is a fair punishment because this was legal in the state? Listen, everything And I don't is, know what it is. What synthetic it, marijuana? It doesn't even matter what it is. Everything is, or something. everything is legal in Louisiana, right? That has no bearing on this argument whatsoever. Right. Okay, so... What the question is not were they breaking the law or any of these sorts of questions. Okay. The question is, should we not expect kids who are playing on football teams, right, right representing major academic universities, right, right, to have better judgment than to be buying potpourri and then smoking? Is that what they're doing? Is that even Apparently, what this is? Apparently, that's what I'm saying. I have no idea. Okay, listen. So it doesn't matter if potpourri is legal. Right. It's that only an idiot would buy it and then be like, well, I'm going to smoke this, right? They're, these are we should, these kids should be like watching film or something like that, not right. smoking what's in their grandmother's dish or whatever. <laughs> this is this is a silly argument. They should no, be, but you said the word several times, kids. That's what they are, Reed. They're kids. And this look, is synthetic marijuana. It's not even real pot. Like, I don't get it. it. But I know I said kids. These right. are not just kids. These are kids who are making tens of thousands of dollars playing college football, right? So the point is this. We should expect them to have more respect for themselves right. and for the universities that they represent. A one-game suspension? Are you kidding me? Listen, I suspect this is not even LSU suspending them. This is LSU trying to come up with some creative way to have these their star players sit out one extra week getting ready for out. They probably, that's, as a matter of fact, that's probably what they have been doing. There's probably no appropriate at all. Uh-oh. They've probably been watching film for three weeks straight getting ready for Alabama. Three, we actually stuff. agree. See? There Dad you go. Alright, so the point is not a fair uh, punishment. They should be out for how many games? No, I two, look, three. Go ahead and say what you want. Yes. I still think the one game suspension was fair enough. We just agree that they probably set them out to give them more time to prepare for Alabama. Interesting. Yeah. Stay tuned for the grill with WJOX's Ryan Brown. Reed, it's time for rapid-fire questions with Ryan Brown from WJOX in Birmingham, who turns out is terrified of heights. Oh, interesting. Yes. All right. Would you say Lance Taylor is the best boss you've ever had? <laughs> no. Have you heard rumors that many Auburn players have been using performance eliminating drugs this season? <laughs> I've not heard that rumor. No. If UAB wins a game, but there's no one there to see it, does it make a sound? That's an excellent question. I'm saying no. Okay. Many people don't realize that Jim Dunaway is such a big Auburn fan. How does he manage to keep that a secret? (laughs) Very carefully. Who would you rather go on an extended vacation with? Tammy from the Paul Feinbaum Show or the corpse of Muammar Gaddafi? I'm going to go with the corpse. Okay. Will this year's Iron Bowl be so lopsided that we'll have to be measured not in touchdowns, but in dog touchdowns? (laughs) That's time seven, right? Correct. Yeah, we'll go just touchdowns. Okay. What do LSU fans smell like? Uh, I've heard corn dogs. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you heard of corn dogs? Yeah, that's right. What team from the East makes it to Atlanta this year? I still say it's the Georgia Bulldogs. Should there be a playoff in college football? I'm not a fan of a playoff. I like the BCS. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a <laughs> jerk. Yeah. Don't push me off. 
All right, we all know who Bryant and Jordan were, but do you really know who either Denny or Hare were? Uh, Hare was a former coach, and Denny was a former president. Really? Long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. Is it too early to start thinking about next year's Alabama LSU game? Oh, it's never too early. It'll be a night game, too. How many times a day do you think Gus Malzahn wonders why he didn't leave Auburn last year? <laughs> Every time he looks at Clint Mosley or Barrett Trotter. How many Gamecock fans would drive to Missouri to watch a football game? <laughs> Very few. How many Missouri fans would drive to their own stadium to watch a football <laughs> Apparently game? very few. <laughs> Those are good answers, yeah, I think. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Yeah, thank right, you very let's much. get you away I from get the to live? Yeah. Great. Ryan Brown from WJOX in Birmingham, uh, you glad to be back on solid ground here? Yeah, this is much better. I know, right? You yeah, kind of freaked out there. Yeah, it, that, that's rough on me. That's okay. It's that's understandable. I mentioned the gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ryan, some people may not realize that you are a Heisman voter, that is and correct. there's a hot topic right now mm -hmm. with a player in this very state. Who do you think is going to win the Heisman Trophy at the end of the year? Well, I think Trent Richardson has a really big advantage in that every game he plays for CBS is a big national game. It's the national TV game, not a regional audience. So the entire nation gets to see him on CBS, you know, against LSU, against Auburn, and in the SEC championship game if they make it that far. It's a big advantage for him. I, I think Trent Richardson and probably Andrew Luck would have to be your two favorites right now. Okay, when you get right to Alabama this season, uh, are they as good as everyone's saying or as, as good as they've looked so far? Yeah, I mean, I think so. They've got a dominant defense, and people will point out, well, they haven't really played a good offense outside of Arkansas, and, and, and that's true. But I think if you look at – what the offenses they play do on a week-to-week -week basis and then what they do against Alabama, you could see a noticeable drop-off. Their defense is dynamic. Their offense is top 25 in the country as far as yardage and scoring goes. So, you know, I think they've got as good a balanced team as anybody in the nation. But what do you make of these slow first halves? Because, it, listen, let's be honest, in some of these games, they almost look as bad as Auburn in the first come halves. Come on, read, read, come on, come on. Why do you think they come out of the well, locker room so sluggish? Well, I mean, I, I think you try with LSU hanging out there to get this team motivated to go play a bad Ole Miss team and be at home and play a bad Tennessee team. I think it's tough to motivate them. They've been looking forward to this LSU game for so long, and I think that's been the toughest thing for Les Miles and Nick Saban is to keep these teams focused over the last two or three weeks knowing that that LSU-Alabama game was hanging out there. Do you think that Les Miles suspended those three players just to try to distract his team and give them something to look at other than Alabama? Well, Les Miles said he didn't suspend them. Oh, that's right. So yeah. I'm not entirely sure why they missed the game and didn't come to the stadium. Maybe they got bad directions. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I, think, um, you know, I, I think he suspended them because he knew he could beat Auburn without right. those players. And, and listen, I'm glad they're back. I want everybody at full strength. If we're going to have a game of the century like this is built, let's have everybody playing in the game. You don't want to spend it. Colt McCoy excuse again. Uh, no, well, I think Alabama fans have heard enough of that for the last couple of years. Sure. All right, so with all this said, what's your prediction for the Alabama LSU game? I think Alabama wins. I mean, I think this game is so tight and so close, and these teams are so similar. They don't turn the ball over. They play great defense. They run the football that it really comes down to home field advantage. And I think being in Tuscaloosa is the difference in this game for Alabama. Now, generally with home field advantage, that gives you a three-point advantage. you think it'll be that close of a game? I do think it'll be that close. I think somewhere three to six points decides this game. Yeah. I've said I think they're going to win by at least two touchdowns. I really do think that. I think Alabama's going to walk away with us. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's, let's talk about another prediction. We talked about the Heisman Trophy earlier. Mm -hmm. A lot of people this time last year thought for sure Gus Malzahn would be a head coach this season. Right. Um, but now maybe people are not so sure about next season, what's going to happen with him. What do you think this year's offense at Auburn has done to his stock as a future head coach? Well, I don't think there's any doubt it's hurt it. I mean, this is the worst offensive year he's had as an offensive coordinator. So, you know, you were coming off such a high with the Heisman Trophy winner and Cam Newton and that unbelievable national championship offense. And it's dipped down. Um, but the job market might be a little bit better this year. I mean, you look at the jobs he was in for last year, Vanderbilt and Maryland. You know, those aren't exactly great jobs. North Carolina is going to be open. And without NCAA issues, that's a pretty good job. Ole Miss may be open. You know, it's oh, not Ole a, Miss will be it's open. A, sure. it's not a great, Sooner rather than later. Yes, it's not a great job, but it's better than Vanderbilt, right? right. So, you know, I mean, I, I think the crop of jobs might be a little bit better, and I don't think he's hurting himself to the point that he won't be considered for those jobs. And look, we take digs at Auburn, but let's not forget they lost 19 starters. I mean, surely people can take that into consideration that, I mean, this is a very young team that he's dealing with this yeah. year with a very young offensive line. And it certainly has, and you have to look at their three losses have been against top 10 teams. They've yeah. lost to undefeated Clemson, undefeated LSU, and one loss Arkansas. And all those teams are right at the uh, threshold of the top ten. And next Alabama, arguably, arguably the 
best three other teams in the country. They've got yeah. the toughest schedule in the nation. I mean, I don't think yeah. there's any doubt. We knew that going into it as well. Going forward from this point, how many games does Auburn win? Well, they'll beat Ole Miss. Right. Uh, they'll beat Sanford. Uh, and I think Georgia becomes the swing game there. It, it's hard to see them beating Alabama even in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Alabama's an elite team in the country. You know, Georgia becomes the swing game for Auburn. I mean, that becomes a huge difference maker in their season. And I think, you know, Georgia will be a slight favorite in that game, but I don't think that's an unwinnable game for Auburn. Definitely they win two. I, they can win three. I don't see how they could win four. Ryan, you are on record as saying that you don't think college football needs a playoff. No, I don't. You've also said that you like the BCS. Yeah. Are you a moron? <laughs> I'm Baptist. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. that, well, that explains that. Uh, yeah. um, dance how, around explain players. that, though. How, how can you defend the BCS? Because I think we pretend that a playoff is going to award the national championship to the best team, and it's not. The college basketball playoff doesn't. It awards it to the best team in March and April. I, I think there should be some weight given to being the best team all year long, and I think more often than not, as much criticism as the BCS takes, it gives the national championship to the team that has proven to be the best from September through the middle of January. So what do you tell Auburn fans, 2004? What do you I say? I said more often than not. I mean, I mean, there is always room for error. And, you know, would Auburn have won a playoff that year? I don't know. I mean, would Auburn have won if they had Nobody just played? Knows. Nobody knows. We Nobody don't. Knows. Would Auburn have won had they just played USC? And playoffs are in balance, too. A lot of times in the NCAA tournament, a one seed in the East gets a tougher draw than a one seed in the West. So it's, it's not like a playoff is a perfect system either. We pretend it is, but it really doesn't give us, in my opinion, a better champion than the BCS does. Definitely not perfect, but probably not laughable like the BCS is sometimes. I mean, this year we could end up with you know, an SEC team, uh, Stanford, Clemson, Boise State. I mean, there could be several teams that could easily compete for the national championship. Say Alabama ends up in the national championship game with okay. Boise. Right. How do you think that plays out? I think Alabama would drill Boise. Drill them. Yes, I do. I mean... I think both teams would be on equal footing at that point. They've been given, you know, a month, month and a half to get ready for that game. And, and Boise has not seen a defense like an Alabama or an LSU. The closest they've seen is Georgia. And Georgia's defense has played well of late, but they did not, they weren't ready in that game. They weren't an SEC level defense. Um, I, listen, I'm not a Boise hater. I think Boise's a good team. I think Boise has a huge advantage in that they have two or three big games a year and they have a, plenty of time to get up for those games. You do not get that in the SEC. You have to be up almost every single week in the SEC. Right. And that's the thing. I think if they were in the SEC, they'd lose plenty of games. They but would. since they're not, they're able to no. get up for those big yeah. games. It's the only way you could argue about them because right. they're not in the SEC. They're in the Mountain West right now. Okay, so talking about conferences and all these things, what, what do you make of the changes the SEC is currently experiencing? How far do you think this goes before it stops? Where do we land? Do they need to rename the divisions? What's going to happen here? You know, I've always thought we're eventually going to have 16-team super conferences, and I really thought that's where we're headed. We're going to stop at 14 right now, and I think it will settle out for another year or two. Mm -hmm. and, but I think eventually you're going to have four 16-team super conferences. And really, I think the first domino that falls there is whatever Notre Dame does. When Notre Dame finally decides what they're going to do with football, whether they're going to remain independent or join a conference, that's when all the rest of the dominoes will fall. Do they still have a football team? Yeah, can they start winning games before we start caring about <laughs> it, them? It again? is amazing how much weight they pull when they've really been a national championship non-factor for a decade and a half. I mean, they, they, they haven't been yeah. in the hunt for a long time. All right, here's my theory. If Missouri comes into the SEC, as some people you know, speculate right. will happen, and they are put into the East, yeah. right, then no longer do the names East and West make any sense. Mm -hmm. My theory is maybe they should rename the divisions, call the Western Division the men, the East, the boys. What right. do you think about that? Men versus the boys. That's yeah. the way it is this year. Yeah, I, I would agree. That's much better than leaders and legends at the Big Ten. Oh, I, like that. I like the men and the boys. I like that. It makes perfect sense. Yes. Uh, okay, so who's going to win the national championship this year? I, I think it'll be the winner of the Alabama-LSU game. And since earlier I predicted Alabama, right. I've got to stick with that and say Alabama. Would you be a fan of a rematch between those two teams? I would not. Okay. I think it can happen. I think we're closer to it happening than we were before Oklahoma and Wisconsin lost. Um, but, I, you know, this is going to be a huge regular season game. And, yeah, LSU has to come to Tuscaloosa to play it, but they've already played once. I've never, I was not a fan in 96 when Florida and Florida State rematched. They didn't even have a game between it. You know, that was the uh, – Florida had the SEC championship game. Florida State didn't have another game. So that was the end, and then they played again. I, I'm not a fan of rematches. So you think that a no-loss Boise will get in above a no. one? No, no, no. Uh, I, I think, a no-loss Clemson? A no-loss Clemson gets in. Okay, possibly yeah. a no loss Stanford, a no-loss Clemson are okay. A no-loss Oklahoma State is definitely in. Poor I mean, they're, they're, Boise. It's definitely a Boise. Poor Boise. Boise will get jumped by a one-loss Oklahoma State, a one-loss Alabama or LSU. 
maybe even a one-loss Stanford, probably not a one-loss Clemson. Okay, let's say that UAB a... UAB has a better chance <laughs> than Boise at this point. Let's say Have that you watched a, UAB play? No, they don't. No one has. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's say that a no-loss Alabama is matched up against a no-loss Clemson in the right. national title game. Mm-hmm. Will Dabo throw the game? <laughs> I don't think it'll have to. They don't have a good enough defense oh. to play an SEC team, so uh, it, it will be taken out of his hands. <laughs> have you ever seen anyone as excited to beat Auburn as Dabo Sweeney? <laughs> Dabo is, I mean, he's one, I'm a 40-year-old rant yeah, away know, from right? being Mike Gundy, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's amazing. People love his post-game press conferences now. Yeah, they do. Put him and Will Muschamp in a room together. It's going to explode. <laughs> Nothing exists after that, yeah. yeah well, Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Anytime. Fun. Love it, guys. For sure. Up next, it's time for the Innisfree Trivia Minute. Reed, before we go to Ennis Free, we need to congratulate Tim Croft. He correctly guessed that the first game played at Jordan-Hare Stadium was in 1939. But to be technically correct, Will, the stadium was not called Jordan-Hare in 1939. It was called Jordan-Hare at that time. Right. I think it was actually called like Auburn Stadium or something. Or that, whatever. Yeah. Nerd alert, nerd alert. Tim actually pointed that out to yeah. us. Viewers, don't forget that you, too, can be a winner by correctly guessing the answer to this week's trivia question and submitting your answer either to the phone number or email address at the bottom of the screen. Reed, let's head to the free. Okay. Hey, I'm Nick. And I'm Carrie. And this is your Innisfree Trivia Minute. The question of the week is... Who was the honorary captain for Alabama in the 2008 Iron Bowl? A. Sean Alexander. B. Saran Stacy. C. Jay Barker. Good luck. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. We'd like to thank Ryan Brown. Have you ever seen anyone that afraid of heights? No, he's a scaredy cat and just in time for Halloween, too. Viewers, don't forget you can find the show both on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search for us at The Iron Bowl Hour. I'm Will Lockamy. I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle Reed. War Tide, Will. Hey, and happy Halloween. Vulcan Park and Museum. Don't miss Diane Birch in concert Sunday, October 23rd during Vulcan Aftertunes. Tickets and info available at visitvulcan.com. Roll Eagle Reed. War Tide, Will. Hey, and happy Halloween. <laughs> I'm Will Lockamy. And I'm Reed Lockamy. Roll Eagle Reed. War Tide, Will. Happy Halloween, too. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? After I say happy Halloween. Oh, right at the end. I say happy Halloween and then you pop up.